Hey everyone, today we're going to be playing the game Siberia. This game came out a few years ago, or probably several years ago, I don't remember when it came out. I actually enjoyed the story. Okay, let's get into it! Okay, I'm back. I should have mentioned beforehand, if you're not familiar with this game, um, I just want to be clear this is not a horror game. I know that that intro was a little eerie, but it, it really is not scary. I just want to make that clear. But this game's been out for a while, so most of you probably have heard of it. Okay, I've already played this. Yeah, so... Actually, it's going to go a lot quicker and smoother because- Okay, that's the one thing that I hate, is you start to go in one direction, then when it changes screen, the direction you're going in no longer is the right direction, so you just turn back around. So that that's the one thing that I just haven't got the hang of. Hi there. What are you doing? Can I see? No, too difficult. Momo's work, very difficult. This... So, your name's Momo. I'm Kate. Momo do like Hans. He draw. Hans? Don't disturb Momo. Momo work difficult. Will you show me your drawing? No, not finished. Go away. Very direct. I guess okay. I'll let you continue working. Okay, yeah, there's really nothing to see here. I'm trying to remember run. Okay, that's run. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Reception bell. I need a key. I, uh, oh, yeah. Oh. You have to equip it. Sometimes it's hard to see the little... Okay, okay, I'm coming. Hi there. Hello there, ma'am. I would like a room. My company should have made a reservation in the name of Walker. The company is Marson and Lormont Associates. The name is Kate Walker. Of course, Miss Walker. You are in room six on the next floor up. Thank you. So you'll see. Okay, so... Okay, wrong thing I meant to do. I'm just... See, now you see that little yellow thing by the stairs? Or something. I shouldn't leave my luggage here. And, oh, here's the luggage. Yeah, those little... Triggers with the yellow. I okay. really don't have the strength to take this suitcase any further. Mm -hmm. I wonder who can help me. Oh, Jesus, and go back and forth. Ooh, what's this? Yeah, sometimes that yellow is hard to see. I'm not going to read all of this. I'm really not. 
So basically, though, this town and all of the, uh, you'll see the buildings and stuff. It's, um, animat animatronic, but it does it auto automaton. They're automatons. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Basically, there's somebody who invented them all. Local. Hi there. Hello there, man. Hello. Oops, wrong thing. Of course. Oh god, okay. Could you possibly take my luggage up, please? Your luggage? Why, of course. Please do excuse me, Miss Walker. We have been neglecting our duties. Guests are so rare these days that we forget our manners. So you're the American woman? Is it true what people say? That you've come to buy the factory? Not factory. Anna's house. Hans house. Excuse me? Would you quiet down, you mischievous little boy? Ah. Oh. I imagine our little town must disappoint you. You see, today is very sad for us. It's a day of mourning. Today is the funeral of Miss Anna. Momo sad, but Hans not dead. Hans long way away. Anna told Momo. Anna liked Momo very much. That's enough, Momo! Stop pestering the lady! Now go on, scram! Get out of here, you hear? What was I saying? Oh yes, Miss Anna. Such a great loss for Valle de Laine, it really is. Because now that she's dead, the factory will close. But you're here to stop that happening, aren't you? Our future is in your hands, Miss Walker. What? Anna Varlberg is dead? Here's your room. I hope you like it, Miss Walker. I'll leave you to rest for the time being. You must have a lot of work to do. You know, the takeover of the factory is very good news for us here. It would make us very happy to see life return to our valley. If only you had seen Valadilen before. It was delightful. People came from all over the world to buy Vorlberg automatons. Ah, somebody has left you some mail, I see. Remember, if you need anything at all, we're not far away, Miss Walker. See, that's the one, another downside of this game is they, they talk too much. They're too chatty. Um, so yeah, basically, oh, no, they're itchy nose. Um, so Kate Walker basically works for the, uh, for a lawyer. And there's going to be an exchange of you know, ownership of the company that makes these automatons. But that's Anna, and Anna has passed away. Yeah, see, dear Kate, our client, the Universal Toy Company. So the lawyer works for a client called the Universal Toy Company. They want to buy uh, this automaton factory and company and all that. And Anna's base, uh, Kate Walker is there to seal the deal with the owner, Anna, who has died. I should tell Marson about the death of Miss Varlberg. I hope this isn't going to get too complicated. I can't see myself staying here too long. I believe Marson is her boss, yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, you can, you can actually call people in this. Usually no need to. Rarely. Marson and Marmont, how can I help you? Can you put me through to Mr. Marson, please? It's Kate Walker. Hold the line, please. Very realistic. Hello, Kate. So tell me, how's the case going? I've just got to Valadie Lynn, and there's a slight problem, Mr. Marson, I'm afraid. Mrs. Vorlberg is dead. Ah, that's most unfortunate. But I seem to remember we made provisions for just such a sad eventuality, and we know that there was no heir. Yes, that's right, but... So where's the problem, Kate? Contact the notary right away. I'll get my secretary to fax you his address and an introduction letter from the firm. Very good, Mr. Marson. Right, I gotta go, Kate. Keep me up to date, okay? I just... <sighs> okay, get out of that. So now we go to the notary. I know where he is, but I think you have to actually have her ask. 
the guy over right here. There's nothing this way, right? Yes. Anyway, yeah, look at Kate's face. That's Kate. Yeah. That little square on the bottom right. Bottom right, right? Yeah. The little square, that's basically what you're equipped with. Right now, we're not equipped with anything. You go to this menu, and you can equip from here. Oh, see, I, oh, it's gonna be a problem. I'm back again. Miss Walker? What did the a mission? fax didn't arrive for me, did it? Maybe. I thought I heard the phone ring. Do you think you might want to go and check? Certainly, ma'am. Immediately. Thank you very much. So that's another one, so... That's basically just more confirmation about what I just said before with the company that wants to buy it. Basically, the instructions left before before Anna Varlberg died. She left instructions on what to do, since there was no heir. So this is just a fact. Thank you. Regarding that. At your service. And then... Yeah, just, I just love all these little mechanical robots! I've noticed there are tons of them here in Valadilen. Be careful what you say. Vorlberg automatons are not robots. If you want people to like you here, never ever pronounce the word robot. Uh, okay. Uh, what is the difference between an automaton and a robot, then? <laughs> uh, well, to tell you the truth, no one really knows. Yeah, then we'll ask about Anna. Did you know Anna Varlberg yourself? Oh, why, of course I did. I, I mean, well, not really. She was a very great lady. We loved her very much. May she rest in peace. Okay. I don't think there's more to say with the mission. Um, help might be how to get instructions for the notary. Could you tell me where I can I find a mission. notary here in Valadilen by the name of Alfalter? We only have one notary here, and his house is easy to recognize. You can't miss it. I love how that's the only information you got. Okay, we'll talk about Momo real quick. It just helps to understand the background a little better. Who is the boy who was drawing here earlier? Is he your son? Heaven forbid! No, no, not at all. <laughs> He's not a bad boy. No, Momo is just a little simple, that's all. What is his connection with Anna Varlberg? Momo is what you'd call the village idiot, and Anna took him under her wing. He must have reminded her of her younger brother, no doubt. And uh, birds of a feather stick together, don't they? You're implying that Anna Varlberg was a little bit slow as well? Heaven forbid! No, no, not at all. She was a real loner. She kept to herself, that's all. Okay, and then we'll ask about Hans. It's... The young yeah. boy who was here earlier talked about uh, uh, Hans. Uh, who is Hans? Uh, Momo was talking about Hans Vorlberg, Anna's younger brother. But he died a long time ago. Nobody here even met him. And I don't think help then, because we already got the notary. I from think it. I'm going to need your help again. Are you leaving already, Miss Walker? Should we bring down your luggage? No, no, I'm not leaving yet. It's just that... We would love to help, but just think what would happen if the telephone rang, or, or if a fax arrived, or if a customer came through the door. We don't have five minutes rest here. I'm sorry. Oh, See, it's okay. No biggie. I never liked that, because before he was saying how he doesn't have many visitors, and now he's saying he doesn't get five minutes rest. Um... That, that always just aggravated the hell out of me. Like, there couldn't be a better explanation to just get the story going. I'm gonna go look around Valadilen. See you later. As you like, miss. Like, the game developers couldn't come up with a better excuse for her to just keep going. There is something here I can get later. I don't know if I can get it now. I'm gonna take it now. They come in handy later. Where is it? It's on the floor. There we go. So I should have, yet yeah, one, two, three, four. I think it was four. I don't think there was more. They come in handy later. It just saves time. I'm trying to not waste too much time. I want to kind of go through this fast. 
but still. You know, I want to go through this fast enough, but still give you enough information to understand the story. So yeah, we're going to the notary right now, and I know he's over here. What's here? And that's, uh, the obituary for Anna Val Varlberg. So he's gonna basically notarize the document regarding, um, what to do in the, you know, in the event of Anna's death. The, the fact door that she- is locked, but I've still got to get in there. If that's going to work- oh. I always forget to equip stuff. I think it's this one we have to do. Yeah, out of nowhere the music just gets creepy and I don't know why. This, like I said, it's not a horror game. So basically, yeah, he's gonna notarize the document. To help speed along the transaction between the toy company and the factory. Oh, this thing's jammed. No, it shouldn't. Oh, this oh. thing's jammed. My bad, my bad. There we go. It's cool, right? is the desk with the notary stuff but he's in this room so we're gonna go right in here hello sir miss walker i presume have you had a good journey everything went very smoothly thank you do take a seat miss walker please i imagine you are aware of the business that brings me here of course i was waiting for you Yeah, I'm not going to ask a hundred million questions. I'm just going to move the story along. Uh, Miss Walker, I am afraid that the sale of the Vorlberg factory is not as straightforward as it first seemed. Whoa there. Everything was agreed. We'd obtained Anna Vorlberg's consent, and her death does absolutely nothing to invalidate that. Now, I have to be back in New York the day after tomorrow, Metro Alphotair. My client and I are impatient to seal this deal. I understand only too well, Miss Walker. <clears throat> There is a... an heir, Miss Walker. Ooh. Excuse me? An heir? But Madame Varlberg never married, as far as I know. And in my last conversation with her, she absolutely never mentioned this detail. Miss Walker, believe me, I was more surprised than you are. Anna Varlberg sent me a letter two days before she died. Understand, Miss Walker, that had I known about this earlier, I would have informed you. I shall read you the document in my possession. <clears throat> I am so very old. It seems that today life is slipping away from me more quickly than I imagined, and I fear that I will not be of this world to sign the takeover contract for my dear factory. So, I must make this confession to you now. My brother, Hans, is still alive. It would not surprise me if you find this difficult to believe, but it is indeed the truth. You must remember his death, his funeral, too. Even though you were very young at the time, it was but a sordid charade dreamt of by our father. To him, the very idea that his only son should wish to leave Baladilen and abandon the family business was unbearable. When Hans left, he preferred to think him dead and make everybody else believe this, too. He obliged me to bear this terrible secret as well. I repeat that Hans is still alive. So when I die, it is he who becomes the sole and rightful heir of our factory. Okay, I see. 
If Hans Varlberg is not dead after all, then I just have to sign the contracts with him. I suppose you've already contacted him? Where can I reach him? The second half of the letter informs us that Hans Vorarlberg is somewhere in Siberia. I will leave the document in your hands to read at your leisure. Yeah, so that's basically everything she just he just said. So we actually don't Anna have Varlberg to read that. had no further information to add. Unfortunately, not. I have told you as much as I know. The situation, in legal terms, is now clear. If you want to conclude this sale, you have to find Hans Vorbeck. Apparently, there is a body lying in the town cemetery. There also seems to be some ghost wandering around Siberia. It seems you have your work cut out for you. Believe me, Miss Walker, when I say that I am most sorry for this regrettable setback, most sorry. Great. What now then? Perhaps you will find out more in the Varlberg factory archives. You will find the key in the waiting room. My role in this affair finishes here with the reading of this letter. And now if you'll excuse me, I must rest. You see, my health is not excellent at the moment, and my doctor forbids me from working for too long. I will not detain you for any longer, Miss Walker. Do not forget to close the door as you go out. Goodbye, sir. Yeah, so Momo was right. Hans isn't dead. I'm not gonna bother with him anymore. For the sake of showing you, there's nothing you can do. There. there we go. We need the key to the factory. Whoop, whoop. I hate that. Which is right here. This took me forever to find. I couldn't find it before the first time I played it. Now we'll head out here. Up, up, up. But why can't I? Oh yeah, hold on, I gotta go. What's the problem? Okay, okay, there we go. Don't ask me why that was such a... Okay, what's the problem? Oh, okay, there we go. Hello? Kate? Dan, I'm so pleased to hear your voice. How are you, honey? Did you have a good journey? Have you settled in? It was long, tiring, damp especially, but I'm okay. Especially when you... Everything going as planned? Yeah, I mean, well, not really. It's not exactly what I thought it would be. You know, everything's so different here. Actually, while we're on the subject, I managed to free myself up tomorrow lunchtime. I'll come and meet you at the airport. I hope the flight from Paris won't be delayed. We're expected at the Goldbergs about 8 o'clock. I hope you have the time to take a shower and change, my poor honey bun. Dan, I don't think the Goldbergs tomorrow night is really on. Don't worry, Kate. You'll be as perfect as ever. Anyway, you never have to wear much to look really great. Dan... Dan, I I'm going to have to extend my stay here. There's one or two complications. You understand? Kate, honey, what are you talking about? It's only a measly toy factory. The sale isn't going through as expected. I I've got to stay a bit longer. Dan, you don't mind, do you? But Kate, Katie, you can't do this to me. I mean, it's the Goldberg contract. There's millions of dollars on the line here. I know, I'm sorry. You go ahead. Don't worry about me. I'll get back as soon as I can. I promise. Okay, I, I, I've got to go. I'll call you back soon. Love you, honey. Yeah, so if you couldn't tell that's her husband or boyfriend or whatever. I think he's a lawyer, too. That. Doesn't look like that works. Well, there we go. This is basically the puzzles relating to the automatons. So here we here is the factory. This is like a whole big thing too. There's like, see this? You can go four different ways. 
in this nose of mine. Excuse me. Okay, so here up here, all right. So we're in the, you know, we're in the area to the factory. And then there's the cemetery. But you know what, we're here. So we'll do this first. Actually, when I, my first playthrough of this, that I didn't record, I actually skipped this part. I couldn't. I didn't realize this was here for all this. I ended up going to the cemetery first. The door's locked, but I've still got to get in there. Yeah, the door is locked. Even though she didn't go up the steps to find out. Yeah, you can't go that way. Forgive the creepy music. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, one second. I'm gonna make the music a little lower. Okay, the music's a little lower now. Not that I can tell in my headphones. Okay, so we have... Wait, I clicked... I need there a we go. key. Need a key. And I don't think we have a key. We do not have a key. Wait, can I? Wait, this is ridiculous. I know I can keep going. There we go. Come on. That door. I've got to. Wait. I've got to okay. find another way around. So this door's locked too. And that's fine. We'll go in there now. <laughs> Good morning! You've got a magnificent garden here. Oh, please, don't talk about it. Since my gardener automaton broke down, there are weeds everywhere. You can't imagine how much work it takes me. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. We're not used to doing without our robot help here in Veladitlan. But everybody says that we're going to have to get used to it. She said robot. She just discriminated. She said robot. Yeah, you can't- yeah, you can't go in there. Yeah, I think- yeah, it's this. Okay, there we go. Got the key. I'm going to equip it now, because I know I'm going to forget to equip it later, and it's just annoying. I just get irrationally angry about it. No point. It's locked. That's okay. I didn't think you had to go that way anyway. I just recently played this, so I... Mm, I should have... I should have remembered... Easily this, but... Like I said before, I actually started playing the second one, so I'm my head's on the second one. I didn't get that far in the second one though, but I did complete this one. Come on, come on, Kate. There we go. I think I'm actually getting ahead of myself. I think I come here a little bit later. I'm actually going out of order than the order I went in the first time, thinking that I go a little. F this would be faster. But now that I'm thinking about it, I might not be in the right spot. Oh, okay. 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 Take that. Let me take this. Is there a lot of these? There's a lot of these. I really don't want to read all of these. I'm not a big reader in games. There Look how much that is. Okay, so May 14th, 1930. Yesterday something terrible happened. I do not know who to turn to, who to talk to. 
So I've decided to write it down. You, dear diary, are now my confidant and sole guardian of my secret thoughts. Hans, Hans lies in the next room, teetering between life and death, and I'm terrified. Oh, the injustice of life. First mama, then Hans. Please, dear lord, don't take my little brother away as well. May 15th, 1930, the next day. Hans made me promise to keep this a secret, but its burden is too heavy. I know I can tell you, though, dear diary. We discovered a cave in the mountains, a marvelous cavern with ancient paintings on the walls. Only a prehistoric man could have painted them, because there were depictions of mammoths, which are prehistoric cre creatures as well that much I know. I hate mammoths now. It's all because of them and because of that stupid prehistoric children's toy. Why, Hans? Oh, why did you try and take it? And why did I let you climb up there? It's my fault you were in a coma now. Hans, if you die, I do not know how I could ever forgive myself. May 16th, 1930. Hans has still not regained consciousness. Father cannot sleep and Gertrude cries all day long. Outside the heat is suffocating, but inside the house is icy cold and dismal. I still have hope, though. I know my brother. I know his strength. He will pr pull through. He never gives in. So basically she just goes on and on about how sad she is that her brother is now in a coma. May 20th, 1930. It has happened. Hans has come back to life. He opened his eyes and uttered my name. My name. Do you realize? This is the happiest day of my life. I want to take to the streets and sing to pro proclaim my joy to the world. Thank you. Oh, thank you, God. May 13th, okay, May 1st, 14th was her first entry, so May 13th was the accident, May 20th was when he woke up, so six days. He was in a coma for six days, it looks like. So now she's talking about how happy she is that he's, he's okay now, that he didn't die, and, you know, he's talking. Alright, so June 2nd, 1930 is the first day he's left the house. Today was the first day that Hans has left the house. We went for a short walk in the garden, but Hans is still very weak. The doctor said we should be patient and shouldn't rush him. It is so hard, though. I hope so much that life can return to how it once was. June 20th, 1930. Hans has been out his, of his coma for a month now. He still doesn't say much and has difficulty moving. He sits motionless for long periods of time. His eyes wide open is a lost in thought. I have often had to call his name several times before he reacts. Then he will smile, and when he does, the moment is magic for me, and I couldn't possibly be happier. June 22nd, 1930. I had to talk to him. The burden was too great. I asked Hans about the accident in the cave to find out what he could remember. He could utter only, utter only one word, mammoth. And his eyes glowed so strangely when he said that, said it, that he frightened me. September 15th, 1930. I go back to school today and for the first time in my life I am dreading it. I am afraid of leaving Hans alone. Despite Gertrude's kindness and attention, I have the impression that Hans is much less nervous when I'm there. I think Gertrude's some type of a helper, because, um, yeah, her mom died, and it's her dad, her, and her brother, so I think Gertrude's some type of helper. October 3rd, 20th, 1930. While I was doing my homework yesterday evening, Hans crept up on me so quietly that he made me jump. He took a pencil and a blank sheet of paper, and curiously, he started drawing. It is the first time since his accident he has done anything but daydream. October 20th, 1930. Hans scribbles almost obsessively. It is all he will do. All day long. I feel it annoys father. Nobody else understands, but I can see that Hans is trying to draw mammoths. So basically he has become obsessed with mammoths. Alright, January 10th, 1931. The doctor visited to examine Hans. He seems happy that my little brother has fully recovered his faculties. It truly is a miracle. I don't understand why he doesn't talk more, though. Why isn't he livelier like he was before? February 9th, 1931. It is Hans's birthday. Today he is 11 years old. I have the strangest of impressions that actually he has lost five years rather than gained one more. Okay, so he was 10 when he, um, got into an accident and, got, and went into a coma. February 24th, 1931. The doctor has just left. I saw him whispering with father. Their serious expressions worried me awfully. What could they be hiding from me? I am a grown-up now. At the age of 15, you can understand everything. I am too scared to ask father what is happening. Alright, so March 15th, she talks about how his attitude has changed 
and he's not acting normally. April 4th, 1931. I have discovered the truth. Hans is stunted physically and mentally. I eavesdropped and a conversation between the doctor, father, and Gertrude. Gertrude buried her tear-filled eyes in her apron, and father muttered the word. I'm not going to say the word. I'm going to... It's it's not a nice word. Under his breath. He said the R word. How could he say such a thing? April 13th, 1931. It is Easter, and we're on school holidays. This means I can spend all day with Hans, but I protect him from father's permanent dark moods. Yeah, so after the accident, the father just wasn't the same. Hans wasn't the same. Okay. He cannot accept the fact that Hans, his only son, will stay in this state forever. Yeah. April 4th, April 14th. 1931. It is truly difficult to accept, but it is not Hans's fault. Mine maybe, but not Hans's. I don't know how to make father understand. He seems full of hatred for him. It is dreadful. I feel powerless. May 14th, one year passed, okay. No signs of improvements for Hans's mental health or father's attitude towards him. May 30th, 1931. Extraordinary. Father has decided to take Hans to Paris for new tests. He says that only in the French capital will he find truly competent doctors. We must make Hans's ready for the great expedition. June, July 15th, they return. And I'm skipping halfway down. The French doctors have confirmed the diagnosis. Hans will, rem Hans will remain physically and mentally impaired. I am stunned. So there's nothing that they can do. November 16th, the father is still shutting himself away in his office at the factory. January 12th, 1932. Father took Hans to the factory this morning. Hans was so afraid that I accompanied them. Fortunately, Father said nothing. I failed to understand why he insisted on bringing him there. February 17th, 1932. For a month now, every morning, Hans has gone to work with Father at the factory. I'm not exactly sure what he does there, but he seems to enjoy it. I feel my brother's behavior has changed considerably. He is much less capricious. April 14th, 1932. I could cry. Hans has made me a, a present, a small robot mammoth with a trunk that rises and falls. When father saw it, he nodded his head in satisfaction. Progress. May 20th, 1932, both Gertrude and father now have their own ma ro robot mammoths. Theirs are even more intricate and finely tuned. Little brother is not such- okay, I'm not gonna say that. It has the, the bad word again. October 15th, 1932, Hans's ma mammoths now walk, raise their trunks, and wag their tails. It's incredible. December 22nd... December 22nd, but it says December 22th. Tooth, because it has the TH instead of the ND. It says December 22nd, 1932. I met the head of the factory workshop, Mr. Grips, this morning. He says that for a young la lad of 12, Hans is very gifted. It is a shame he only makes elephants. Well, they're mammoths, they're not elephants, there's a difference. February 11th, 1933. Father and Hans were locked in a long discussion yesterday. Or should I say Hans was locked in one of Father's long monologues. As it is inconceivable that Hans should go to school like other children. Father wants to take him on as a worker of the factory. However, Hans will have stopped making his own little devices. Hans' silence, his half-gaping mouth and staring eyes finally sent Father off in a rage. Okay, for February 12th, um, Anna is basically just trying to convince Hans to go along with their father's idea. February 20th, 1933. It's not that Hans cannot speak, it's rather that he doesn't want to speak. He uses the least possible words for communication except with me, but he is still very economical with words. May 15th, 1933. Incredible. Hans was not just satisfied with learning how the assembly line works. Instead, he has completely redesigned it. Father and Monsieur Grips are taking a serious look at his plans. July 10th, 1933. Father has wanted to talk to me about my future since I passed my exams. He wants to send me to university because he says my intelligence is astounding. My heart was beating so loud. It is true, I do love studying. But I couldn't bear to be away from Hans. Okay, so for September 2nd, she, uh, 1933, she is just torn between going to university and leaving her brother. She tried to talk to a, about, uh, she tried to talk to Hans about it, but he really didn't say anything. But that same evening, I found my own little mammoth broken. So he doesn't really want her to leave. Okay, I moved myself so my face is no longer covering the words. I'm sorry, we're probably almost done anyway, so it was probably just a waste. 
October 9th, 1933, Hans had another fit of hysterics at dinner again. Father announced that Hans' new assembly line would soon be finished. However, they have removed the automaton parrots that shout or orders as they were deemed su superfluous. Fl I don't, I don't know. Hans was livid. He hurled his soup dish to the ground and stormed off to his bedroom. What will happen between the both of them when I'm not here? October 17th, 1933. Despite my scruples, I am finally leaving. Hans has not talked to me for a week. Father would not understand if I told him why I wanted to stay. My heart is so heavy. Christmas, it is so strange to be home. I had never left home for such a long time before. Once we were alone, Hans did not stop talking. Words just leaped from his mouth. How we laughed at his excitement. He presented me with a delightful little ballerina to replace the mammoth, he told me. I was so touched that I started crying. Distance has done nothing to harm the strong bond between us. So that was, um, so that was Christmas of 1933, and then we jump to September 10th, 1937. So four years have gone by. Or a little, little shy of four years. It is strange to pick up this diary once more. At first, my impulse was to tear it up. But I resisted and instead succumbed to my second desire, which was to write for a while. I am alone in my attic once more. I have been home for two months now, and after a summer spent living with the intense joy of being reunited with my brother. Hans has returned to the factory. Father has aged so, and Gertrude's arthritis causes her terrible pain. September 13th, 1937. All in all, these last four years have been kind to Father and Hans. Their relationship is less tense. They still do not exchange much conversation, but now they have a thing in common, the factory. I'm even beginning to feel a bit jealous. Silly, really. September 17th, 1937. Hans hasn't changed. To help Gertrude, he has designed a totally automated kitchen, and Gertrude can't stop moaning at the wooden puppets. Oh, how I adore them. October 9th, 1937. I went to go and see father and Hans at work. I hadn't been to the factory for ages. It is strange how much it has changed. I was very curious to see them set about their tasks. I like father's new office very much. Hans has a small workshop on the first floor, crammed with odds and ends, unfinished robots, and designed exactly as I imagined it, in fact. October 15th, 1937. The factory is working very well. Orders for toys keep coming in, spurred on by the run-up to Christmas. When I was at university and I said when I was at university and I said my name was Volberg, people would ask me if I had any relation to the if I had any relation to the factory. I don't think I can pronounce that, so I'm not gonna try. Now I know the effect that Hans Genius has had on the factory's renown. November second, nineteen thirty seven. To make myself useful I started helping father set his papers in order. The most extraordinary thing of all is that for the first time ever, I have the impression that the three of us form a real family. Okay, so December 8th is just talking about how good Hans is at, his, at what he does making toys at the factory and how he treats everyone as his own very own infant, it says. So basically, he takes very good care of the toys he makes. Christmas, the most wonderful Christmas of my whole life. Hans and I could not stop giggling like children beneath father's disapproving glare. I know that he was only pretending, really. Our hearts are so full of hope. So this Christmas was a good Christmas. January 5th, 1938. Hans came to see me in his in my bedroom yesterday evening. I felt terribly awkward, terribly ill at ease. I might have guessed. Hans wants to leave. Leave Valadilien. The house and the factory. He wants to go traveling. He doesn't know where to or for how long. That's just like him. He was so shocked that I told him his plans were foolish. He left my room without a word. His head bowed. January 7th, 1938. I thought that he wanted to leave because of father. Not at all. It's because it's because of the mammoths. He wants to go tracking mammoths. I thought he had gotten over his obsession. I know my brother only too well. I wouldn't dream of telling him his get his quest is useless. It isn't worth it. He will not listen to reason. January tenth, nineteen thirty eight. I was so selfish the other evening. I returned to talk to Hans and ask him gently if he was sure of his decision. I already know what the reply is going to be. Nothing will make him change his mind. Okay, on January 19th, 1938, she decides to help him leave and 
they tell their father. January 24th, 1938, the worst was the worst was worse than my fears. Father's anger was terrifying. He shut Hans away in his workshop at the factory and has forbidden all visits except from Gertrude who feeds him. February 1st, 1938, father has decided that Hans should remain locked up for as long as it takes him to abandon his infantile decision. Gertrude tells me that Hans is very despondent yet highly resolute. The worry is driving me mad. Okay, for February 6th, basically, Hans basically shuts down and doesn't really say much while he's locked away in the factory and it worries Anna and she tries talking to her dad but he doesn't listen. February 9th, 1938, Hans is 18 years old today and he is all on his own for his birthday. That sucks. February 20th, 1938, in secret Gertrude delivered to me a small robot from Hans. It's a robot of us all as ch oh. it's a robot of us as children. It works with a small cylinder punched with tiny holes. I quivered with emotion as I turned the key. The message it gave was simple. He was telling me he loved me very, very much. February 21st, 21st, <laughs> 21 th. February 21st, 1938, Gertrude gave me a different tiny cylinder for today's toy. Hans is truly incredible. He has found a means of communicating between us and us alone in total secret. February 27th, 1938, my days are spent eagerly awaiting Hans's message. He is now re, re he is now resolved to run away. He is preparing his escape like if it was a game. March 6th, March 6th, 1938. Gertrude has returned and she is beside herself. Hans has disappeared. Father has not even deigned to return to the workshop where he locked up his son nor found out how he managed to escape. He just gave me a black he just gave me a black look. Is that supposed to be blank look? I'm going to say blank look. He just gave me a blank look as if he knew we were up to something behind his back. March 7th, 1938. It is beginning to dawn on me that Hans is gone. I miss him so much. Lord, please protect my little brother and watch over him for me. March 11th, 1938. With Hans gone, father now locks himself away night and day at the factory. The house is so gloomy now. March 12th, 1938. This morning I caught father in the drawing room installing a coffin on a trestle. That's dramatic. The sight of it made my blood freeze. What on earth is he up to? My questions meet only with stony silence and a permanent blank continent. Continence? Because she's saying black continence, and I think she means blank. I think the word's supposed to be blank, right? March 13th, 1938. Behind closed curtains, the drawing room with the coffin, surrounded by huge candles, has become a veritable funeral chamber. March 14th, 1938. This is ghastly. I have just understood what father is up to. This morning, the priest came to pray for the co before the coffin, and I finally caught on. Father is in mourning for the death of Hans. Father made the priest believe that his son was dead. How could he do such a thing? March 16th, 1938. In the madness occasioned by his grief, my father grows ever more cold and calculating. He contacted his old friend, Dr. Schmel. Schmal. Dr. Schmal. He contacted his old friend, Dr. Schmall, who duly drew up a bona fide death certificate without even seeing the body. I dare not imagine what yarn he spun. March 17th, 1938. Hans's funeral will be officially held next Sunday. Father strictly forbade me to attend. This sordid masquerade makes me feel, feel ill, but I cannot denounce the subterfuge or else I will display my father's mental instability to the world. The shame would kill him. That much is certain. March 23rd, 1938. I have to get away. Far. Far. Away. April 23rd, 1938. No, I will not leave. I have thought long and hard. My life is here next to my father. He needs me too much now. The factory needs me. Because father is incapable of running it now. Besides, I can only find peace of mind among... Hans is robots. And how shall I know when he has sent me new ones if I am not at home to receive them? No, I shall not leave. My destiny is to remain here and keep watch. Finally, that ended. Okay, so if you skipped ahead from what everything I was reading, basically what happened was Hans uh, and Anna found a toy mammoth, and when Hans went to, went to get the mammoth, he had an accident, and he fell into a coma, and he basically was never the same ever again. He, um... 
physically and mentally he just you know never developed or grew from that from his young age of uh, like 10 or 11 and you know that bothered his father and when his father his father basically he didn't go to school he ended up staying behind in the factory and became very good at making toys and he made pretty much the automatons he's kind of like a a, a genius in that sense with the atom making the automatons but then um he has an obsession with mammoths and he went to siberia to f si siberia to find mammoths and his father faked his death okay that's very very loose interpretation of everything I just read. I'm going slow because there's going to be a cutscene here. Oh, light. Let there be light. What on earth is that? A mammoth. What do you know? What on earth is that? Hans, 1932. So he carved that. 1932. So that goes to what we were saying on how Hans is, um, obsessed with mammoths. Mammoth. You draw mammoths for Momo? Ah! Oh, Momo, it's you! You scared me! What are you doing in here? Momo want mammoth picture. Like Hans picture. Sorry, I haven't got a picture of a mammoth with me. Take paper and pencil and draw mammoth for Momo. <laughs> you don't give up easily, do you? Okay, so we have pencil and paper. Alright, oh yeah, that's all the, um, that's what we have to do. The tasks that we have to do. So, oh, what did I do? I didn't need to do that. Where's the pencil and paper? There we go. I equipped it. And you can see it on the bottom, uh, bottom right, that little box, a little square. That's where we have our, what we're equipped with. Okay, put that back in. Equip it again. So we're going to give it right to Momo. Come on. Mm, thank you. Momo happy. Now follow Momo. Momo show his secret to Kate. Yeah, sometimes uh, the animation in this game can be very slow. Like between that and the dialogue, it kind of slows the game's pace a little bit. Alright, so we're gonna go follow Momo and meet him where he is right now. I just wanna make sure I grabbed everything here, which I think I did. I don't think there was anything else for me to take. Reading that the diary entries, that like, took a lot out of me. Also, I don't like to read a lot, and then to have to read it out loud for the sake of the footage. Yeah, I wasn't gonna do it, then I cho changed my mind and decided to do it, because... Yeah, it's just part of what I'm doing with the Let's Play, it's just... It's the right and fair thing to do. But yeah, normally I hate reading things, and then I actually started to feel bad that I didn't read that, uh, the second facts, or the, even the first facts. So now we're gonna go to Momo real quick, we're just gonna do this in order that the story is progressing.
and none of this is in the order that I first did it on my own when I played the game, so don't be surprised when I get confused. And I know you didn't see this with Momo, it kind of just only showed quickly thing, you know, the quick route. Yeah, but yeah, see now, this is where Momo, now you can recognize where Momo was. Yeah, see now, yeah, so it didn't show all <gasps> of his route. There you are, Momo. This is some walk you've taken me on. I've got to say, though, it sure is mighty pretty. Momo come here often. Momo like make splash in water. I like Momo. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk. And the first time I played, I, I had like every conversation with everybody on everything, and that took time too. It must be broken. I've got to get a helping hand here. Yeah, I don't think I can. Go yeah, see, I can't go that way. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo, listening. Why have you brought me here? Mammoth doll in cave. Very important for hands, Anna say. Cave? What cave? Where? Momo, not liar. Momo, right. I've got to go now. But see you later, maybe. I ended that conversation on purpose. I just want to show... Yeah, see, this is a path to take, but the water is in the way. I can't go that way. I should have done that first to explain why she was trying to do that thing up those steps. And even when you come here, like, you really can't take this boat it's either. It's a shame this boat's been left to rot. Now it's full of holes. I should have explained that before, my bad. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. Momo listening. Can you help me, please? What do? Help me open the dam. Um, Momo strong. Yeah, so that's the point of what I was doing up there before. Trying to open the dam. The dam. Uh oh. Oops. Oops. <laughs> he runs away. Oh, wait. So now I got a broken lever. I'm equipping it. Ugh. That ore is all dirty and wet. Yeah, this pisses me Ugh. off. That ore is all dirty and wet. She won't pick it up because it's dirty and wet, which to me is the dumbest thing in the world that I now have to ask this kid to do it. Momo, I've got something else I want to ask you. How much of a- Momo listening. How much of a diva can she possibly be? I've moved the ore nearer. Be a good boy and carry it for me? Momo say yes. Be a good boy and carry it for me. That is so condescending and demeaning. keep going. My bad. I thought she was gonna cut I thought she was gonna go with him in a cutscene version. Oh wait, nope, oh, he's gotta come with me. Momo. Momo this name. Yeah, I'm just gonna go quickly. Come on, let's go. Why have you brought me here? Oh my bad. Let me Mama's get, let me get out cave. Of Momo not I need a hand opening the dam. Momo say yes. Momo strong. I like Momo.
There we go. Now the dam is open. Um, Momo's strong. Thank you, Momo. I think that's it for Momo, so we can say bye to Momo. I know, I know. I like Momo, too. There just really isn't much... I thought he was going to be more into the story, but he wasn't. Wait, what was that? Wait, I mean, yeah, what was... Okay, that, that's all that was. So now we're going into the cave where this accident happened. I actually didn't read... The, when I didn't read the diary and all that, I actually came into the cave. I think I came into the cave... Yeah, I didn't read the diary, so I ended up finding out later that this was the cave where the accident was. That's the toy. That's the mammoth toy doll that um, caused all this. That That's what Hans was, Hans was after. And then he got hurt. So it was somewhere else in here. Yeah, and I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking down at here. That was never clear to me. I guess those little, little white scratches, but I don't know. It's not important. I thought I thought I could see read something on the wall. Yeah, see, and then you see mammoths on the wall, which I thought I could read, but I guess I can't. Oh, my bad. So yeah, so I came in here and found the mammoth, and then later on found out the story behind. Hans's accident. So I'm like, oh, that's where that's the cave I was in. So now I actually did it in the, the correct order of information. Hello? Kate? Is that you? Well, yeah, who did you think it was? Uh, I didn't recognize your voice, that's all. Must be the distance or something. So, spill the beans. What's Europe like? You lucky lady, you. Honestly, I never get that kind of break. Well, so far all I've seen of Europe is this tiny village, and frankly, they're not very hospitable. Uh, the whole case is getting really complicated. There's this surprise air I've got to find. I know. I talked to Lynn who bumped into Joss and she had coffee with the head honcho this morning. He didn't sound at all happy. The client's meeting him tomorrow, and when Marston tells him that the sale's not even gone through yet... Whoa, you're going to be pleased you're on the other side of the ocean when that bomb goes off. Yeah, I get the picture. But so, how about yourself? What's up at work? We lost the Farrah Lou trial. I worked five months on that dumb case. I remember. So, for a bit of therapy, I went to Boomies. The sale started yesterday. Wow, lucky. It was absolutely crazy, Katie. Absolute mayhem. You know that blue silk top I wanted? Guess how much I got it for. I don't know. $250? $200? dollars <laughs> Just get yourself back here and I'll go down with you. <sighs> like it's my choice. Look, I gotta go. Call me soon, huh? I want a blow-by-blow -blow account of every moment of your great adventure. Get out of here. Look after yourself. You too. Yeah, I will. 100% of that conversation was absolutely useless to the plot of this game. No, it, that's actually her friend, and I guess she's a lawyer too, just like her boyfriend or husband. Well, I'll just call him her partner. Um, well, if I say that, it's not law partner, her actual romantic partner. Um, Dan. Dan is her romantic partner, whether it's husband or boyfriend. Um, so, it seems like he's a lawyer, and it seems like her friend is a lawyer. And I believe her name is Olivia, because I think that's the name I saw on the phone. So what did I get again? I got the toy. Okay, yeah. So now we're going back this way. And I don't think I ever have to go back there either. Like, I think I'm done with that. And I don't think there's anywhere else down here. There's nowhere else I can go here. So we have the toy. We have... Okay, so... Okay, so the the three tasks tasks we have left. Go to the Varlberg factory, and then go to the cemetery, and then put the mammoth in the train, which... Again, I figured all that out from, from this list right here. But there was nothing to even um, indicate that there was a train that I had to go to. So it kind of was like a... I don't want to say spoiler, because it's not a major deal. But, like, it's just the... 
the uh, order that I get the information is is just a little off, I guess, in my opinion. So we can either go back in here. Ah, oh, come on. We can either go in here. Uh, spoiler, spoiler alert. Not really. Um, this is where the train is. Um, and then the cemetery is up that way. So I'm trying to think what the best order to do these things is. We'll take a quick look up in the cemetery. I'm sure that's piqued your interest a bit. And we'll just have a quick chat with this guy. It's really just a quick chat. Good morning. Good morning. What a pleasure to meet such a lovely young lady honoring our aging streets. Please, uh, please sit yourself down next to me so we can enjoy the air together. It would be a pleasure, but I'm afraid I don't have the time. Some other time, maybe. I hope so, miss. I remember when these streets were full of vibrant life. In those days, there was a charming encounter to be had round every corner. Ah, our good little town of Valadilene is not what it used to be. It looks like things have changed a bit around here. Our children have all left the valley. They need to earn a living, don't they? Can't really blame them. You have to move with the times, don't you? And it's not at the Vorlberg factory that they'll find jobs. <laughs> Being excluded from the world is not an easy burden to bear, believe you me, miss. But it's such a pretty little village. Uh, I can tell you're not from these parts. I hope you enjoy the pleasures that we still have to offer. Good day to you. Yeah, see, but he really didn't have any, like, big information to give. I just, um... I just wanted to chat with him because he was there. I mean, I just thought that was nice. To but she said before that they were not hospitable. On the phone with her friend, she said no one here was hospitable. They really kind of were. I mean, the one dude at the hotel was kind of, like, BSing her when he said... I don't think there's anything on this table. Yeah, he was kind of BSing her a little bit when he said, you know, I can't help you because, you know, we don't have five minutes around here to help anybody, to help you. Meanwhile, before that, he was saying that they weren't busy. Hello. Okay, so what's new? We've got a problem, Mr. Marson. What problem? Come on, Kate, don't beat around the bush. There's maybe an heir. What? Hans, Anna Varlberg's brother. Uh, looks like he's still alive. We can't buy the factory without his consent. What? What is this? Where's this mystery brother come from? And more to the point, where is he? What did the notary say? Nothing. I mean, nothing else. You know, sir, it's an odd town here. Everything's odd. The people, things... The situation's not straightforward. I have a small bit of research to do. Listen to me, Kate. Universal Toys is one of our biggest clients. And I don't care how weird that town is. All that matters is that you do not set foot back in New York before you've tied up the deal. Get the picture. Yes, Mr. Marson. You can count on me. I... Darn it! Yeah. That door is locked. I've got to find another way around. I love how she knows this without even going up those steps. I do have to do that, but um, I think it's, it saves time if I do this one first. I make this music, the music is just still loud. Okay, you see, I made the music lower, but it's still... Alright, we'll see. Okay, the key. And then... Yeah, so this is the only spot right here. So we have... No, oh, come on. We've got a red punch card. Come on. 
Come on. Ah, I hate this. Now we have a purple punch card. And we have a... I, th I could have sworn I can still t do something here, but I guess not. And the bottom one, we have a blue punch card. Okay, now there is actually something we can do here. I ended up having to, um, figure this out on a walkthrough on the internet. You see, I open up the door, then I push this thing to the side over here, this, um... Well, that didn't work. This thing right here that the, uh, the little symbol's on right there. You gotta go down to this one. You open up this one. And then, yeah, it extends the drawer even more. So that you can then get... Th okay, I'll read this. To my successor, the Valadolin Parish Priest. The sanctity of confession is a sacred vow. So these revelations are the result of much soul-searching and reflection. One day in March 1938, Rudolf Varlberg knocked at my door. I was a young priest then and was overawed by the dominant personality of the town's most important figure. I remember it was raining that day, and beneath his dripping air, Monsieur Varlberg's face was the very expression of eternal pain itself. Through gritted teeth, his eyes swimming with grief, he announced that his son Hans had just died. He wanted me to come immediately to bless the body. I entered the dark drawing room at the family home. Hans's coffin was set in the middle, sealed shut. Monsieur Varlberg explained to me that he wanted no one to see the body of his son. Hans's badly mangled corpse had been discovered at the bottom of a precipice. It was presumed that he had slipped and fallen badly. Despite his 18 years of age, the body Varlberg did not have... All, uh, despite his 18 years of age, the young Varlberg did not have all his faculties. Oops. Alright, I'm grabbing the Varlberg key. I'm closing this, but I think I think there was a second page. Oops. Again, oops. Oh, that's the facts. That's the priest's confession. Here we go. I believed him. I led the funeral and officiated the mass and burial. We buried Hans Varlberg with all the dignity and solemnity. Solemnity. Bef oh god, I can't, I can't talk. Befitting such a tragedy. Life indeed hangs by a thread, and I would have surely forgotten this episode. Only several years later, after her father's death, Anna Varlberg had an accident at the factory and nearly died. Such a close call with death seemed to awaken her a need to confess. What I heard that day would haunt my dreams thereafter. She told me that the body of her younger brother Hans was not at rest in the family tomb for the simple reason that he was still alive. I had blessed and sanctified an empty coffin. I had assisted and sanctioned a masquerade staged by Rudolf Varlberg himself to exercise the blind hatred he felt for his son. His son had left and he had felt betrayed. A man who preferred to believe and make others believe his son was dead rather than accept this truth, had shamefully deceived me. What kind of priest was I? And what kind of priest would I become? Our merciful Father alone would be my judge. It is my duty to inform you that one of your flock is still unaccounted for. I leave this terrible secret in your hands to do with what you will. Leon Barnard, Priest. Okay, so the priest knows the truth. And... That was his confession, and I hate how the screen changes. Okay. Okay, so... We got everything we needed from there. We don't have to go there again. Now we go up here. Surprisingly, she doesn't say it's locked. Alright, so now we're gonna put all these guys in. I don't remember which one he goes in. Oops. I'm going to each of them. Oops. Okay, we'll do the big one first. There we go. 
And now we'll do the medium one. There we go. And now we'll do the small one, which I think... Was it there? There we go. And this one must be the tiny one. And then we push it. There we go. I'm surprised she didn't... Yeah, I think I said... I was saying, I don't know if I finished my sentence. I'm surprised she didn't say, It's locked or I need cogwheels before those steps. I don't know if I completed the sentence or not. Okay. Ooh, okay. Oh, here we go. Another automaton. Alright. Okay, so we'll just start with the red punch card. I think there's something that you can read that'll tell you which punch card to put in. But we'll just do trial and error. I already know. Oh yeah. That's the Christmas one. Oh yeah, it was trial by error when I did it the first time. And I just, you know, that's a... That's the Silent Night song, right? That was a Silent Night song, right? And then we'll do the blue one. That's the wedding song. Here comes the bride. So now we'll do- oh shit. My bad. Now we'll do the purple one. Now we'll do the purple one. Oh crap. Now we'll do the purple one. I no longer need these punch cards. Okay, I promise it's not a horror game. <laughs> and as you can see, the punch cards are gone. Okay, so we're gonna go here, but we are gonna take a little detour down this way. This is not the way to what we just saw. Maybe I didn't have to come here. This might just be here for the sake of being here then. Oh. For some reason I thought there was something down there to grab. I don't really remember. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna do the key. This is the, uh, the tomb, I guess. Is that the only one to touch? Yes, it is. She's able to do that on her own, but she wasn't able to do anything with that ore and the dam. She needed Momo. I'm sorry, just ridiculous to me. We're gonna take that, press cuts, and was there anything else? 
and the Val Dolan voice cylinder. Val Dolan, right? Yeah. Itchy nose. Wow, I actually scratched myself. Oh, that hurts. Oh, ooh. Now it's itching and painful. Excuse me. Okay. Okay, so now we go. So it's good we got all of these things, so now we can spend the rest- Okay, the rest of the time down in that- Urgh. There we go. So now we can spend the rest of the time down in this other section. Because, yeah, like I said, the first playthrough, I actually came here first. So I was curious about the cemetery. And I couldn't find that key in the dressers, so that was a pain in the butt. So... I was going back and forth, I was going crazy all over the place. But now we're all set. We should be able to, for the most... For the most part, stay now down in the factory area. We might only have to leave for one more thing. Come on. Okay, so we did everything in this first part. The second part, I believe, is the train. That's the train station. I'm trying to think if... So what's the- alright, so the, the two tasks left are go to the Varlberg factory, and then put the mammoth in the train. So that was the train that's- that- okay, so this one should be the factory- no, no. Ah, go back. That's the factory. Let me see what this one is right over here. So that's the factory. So I'm trying to decide whether I should go to the train or the factory. I guess the factory will be the one to go to. Yep, here is the factory that they, uh, the family worked at. And I think we can we, yeah, we go in here. It doesn't sure. work. Yes, it does. Well, it will in a minute. That's so cool. Right? Yeah, I did it. Okay, can't go that way. I don't know why I can't run. There we go. Now I can run. Jesus. I don't think I can go. Can I go all the way down here? I don't think there was anything down here either. Yeah, so we go here. This is gonna be relevant in a moment. Yeah, something we're gonna we're gonna make something that's gonna come out there. I don't think we go this. Do we go this way? No. There was something weird about the angle of this building. This yeah, this room. All right. So now this is where we entered. So now we go this way. We're not gonna go- yeah, see, this I couldn't find the first time. I just went right up these stairs. But we'll do this part.
There we go. Well, here we go again. So annoying. Yes, hello? Kate, what happened to you, my poor munchkin? I've been trying to contact you for hours. I'm in Europe, Ma. Job thing. What? Europe? My God. Oh, I've got such happy memories of Europe. Some of them even involve your father, but uh, that's enough of that. Tell me, where are you? Paris? London? Venice? Valle de Laine. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's a bit out in the boonies. What in the world are you doing out there? You know, business. I've got to see through the takeover of some old family business that's got a few debts. It's a really charming place, but there's one or two weird things going on here. I, I can't go into it now. Oh, well, that's right. Your old mother's too dumb to understand it. You really do take after your father sometimes. Mother. Kate, you'll never guess who I saw yesterday. Ma, I haven't got a lot of time, you know. Frank! Ma, please, I've got to go. Frank! Frank Malkovich, the Russian opera singer. Well, maybe you don't remember him. He was quite a star in his day. Listen, Ma, I really don't have the time. I'll call you back. He is as charming as he always was. We sent it. Mom, I really have to go. I'll call you back, I promise. Lots of love. Kate! Alright, that Frank guy, that name, that's gonna come in, um, into play a little bit later. Like, towards the end of this, this game. Um, so just keep that name Frank in mind, the opera singer that the mother knows. I think I'll go in this room, actually. Well, well, wait, let me look at this more. I just want to make sure there's no other triggers. Okay, what's this? Wait, come on, you jerk. Oh, sh there was something that was supposed to be there. Yeah, it's doing the motion, but there's nothing there that it's moving. So, okay. Okay, so... That's what I, I do have to do something else. You see this guy? Look at this guy. He's moving. See him? See him? There you go. I'm just looking around first. Because I, this is a very, like, dialogue happy game. Matter of fact, yeah, we'll talk to him real quick. So I think talking to him and then we move that thing. That looks broken. Oh, maybe not. I pushed the button. most embarrassed for you to see me like this. I lack a certain completion. You see, nobody here found the time to polish off the finishing touches. Honestly, these days, we really have lost the art of good workmanship. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> With whom do I have the honor of speaking? Could you please state your identity, articulating clearly? My name is Kate. Kate Walker. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Model XZ2000. My common name is Oscar. I represent the technological zenith of this factory's production. I have been designed to drive a locomotive. A touch messy, but an essential task. So he will be driving the train. Oops. So we're gonna go all the way down to production. Can I be of use to you? Why, you certainly can. I absolutely must have my feet. My hands are model XZ2003. My feet are model XZ2005 underscore B. Be careful. 
the model XZ2005 underscore A has evidenced some rather embarrassing performance failures. Like bugs? Automatons do not have bugs, Kate Walker. They simply display functional idiosyncrasies. I'm sorry, I didn't know. What do I have to do to get you a pair of feet? Use the assembly line to construct them. You will need a production punch card, on which is recorded my body design data. Here is my own punch card. Okay, I'll give it a go. Thank you, Kate Walker. See, I didn't even know that there was... I didn't, like, come across that other um, punch card for the wrong feet. I only found the right one, so... I don't think that's going to be a problem later. Do you know where I could find the factory paperwork? I cannot reply to this question with precision. Try Anna Vorlberg's office above the machine floor. Alrighty, we'll do that. Um, I'm not going to... Oscar, I am delighted to have met you. See you again soon, I hope. Yes, Kate Walker. So he basically draw he, his sole purpose of why he was created was to drive the train. We'll go up here, but then I want to go outside. Go in there, come on. Yeah, so that's the the train. Pretty sure that's the train, and I yeah, you, there's really nothing to like read about it. Just to look at it. Okay. Okay, we'll do some more reading. Valadie Lynn, March six, two thousand two. Dear Hans, I know how much you dislike the written word, but I do not have the time to forge you a voice cylinder. I imagine that someone in your entourage will be kind enough to read these few lines to you. I received your latest set of plans. Your project is extraordinary. Your all-time masterpiece, perhaps. Time seems to have had no effect on your genius, quite the contrary. I am proud of you, my dear little brother. Sometimes I find it hard to believe that a century has gone by since the last time I saw you. It only seems like yesterday that you rushed away from Valid... Delen. We undertook production immediately, following your instructions to the letter. The locomotive was ready within a week. If only you could see it. But you will see it. That much I have promised you. It is magnificent. It seems impatient to set out on its maiden voyage. There is only Oscar left to build. I hope I will finish him soon. But as you can imagine, his mechanism is complex and takes a great deal of time and handiwork. Is that it? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand you wished me to bring you that cursed prehistoric doll. The very thought of which I wonder if it is still in the cave, and if it is, what state is it in? But what does 60 years matter? After all, to an object already several thousand years old. I am going to find it, Hans, I promise you. I have a bit of a nasty flu at the moment, which is running me down a little. I should be better in a few days, though. The sale of the factory is taking shape. The lawyer from New York should be visiting, and we will be able to sign the contracts. Then I shall... Uh-oh, she didn't finish. I know I'm off screen when I talk into the mic. Not only that, but I'm actually just trying to get closer to see it on my computer when I read these things. Oh my gosh, invoices, invoices, more invoices. I never knew the factory was in such a bad way financially. These last two years must have been very hard for Anna Vorlberg. Okay, what she just said kind of speaks for itself. It's a lot of invoices. There's really nothing. Like, all you need to... Like, that's all I'm gonna... I'm not gonna read them. I'm just gonna flip through... That, that was... Yeah. I know I'm mumbling. Oh my gosh. Just flip through to show invoices, you how many there invoices, were. Invoices, more invoices. Stop it. I never knew... Stop it. Stop talking. I don't think there's anything else. Okay, so that was that. There was nothing else here, right? Nope, nope, nope. What about the other side? Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Okay, so... 
That's there. So that moves that. There's always a book that moves something. We took the music cylinder. And... We're gonna put that one in its place. Oops. Damn it. Damn it. Father notices you've stolen one of his lanterns. Oh, I'm all covered in mud because of you. Look, Anna. Look. I've seen paintings like this in a library book. They're like you swore, Anna. It's a secret between you and me. Hey, look. There's something else up there. Oh, come on. It's like a toy. I have to have it. Give me some light. But Hans, it's much too high. Do be careful, Hans. Hans, be careful! For weeks, my brother lay in a coma, hanging between life and death. And then one morning, he opened his eyes. But I knew he would never be the same again. We never did return to the cave, and to this day, I have never ever betrayed our secret. That's actually how I found out the story, because I didn't read that diary. The Hands Anna Mechanical Toy. Valor de Len voice cylinder. So yeah, so now we got that back. I think there was something else. Okay, we'll go. I think there may have been something else. I can't remember if there's anything else in that room. So up here is where we go to make Oscar's feats, I believe. Oh, actually, you know what? Wait, what's needed there? Hold on. If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. Yep. Alright, so yeah, we have to come up here later to deal with Oscar's feet, but we're not there yet. We need something. I don't think I have it. Oh! Second. Before we do this, there was something else I had done. So I wanna I wanna look into that first. So now we're going to the train. Which is over here. Go on. can't go down here, right? Nope. Nope. Okay, so this is actually the train station right here. And this is the train that we're gonna be going in. No point weighing myself down. Yeah, that part I never understood, but okay. Now oh, go on, go on, Gatewalker. Okay. Alright, so as you can see on these tasks, put the mammoth in the train, put the cylinders in the train, put the music box in the train. 
find the control panel, start the factory, make feet frosted. So this is what we're gonna do. So here These we... shelves look as if they're made for valuable objects. Which is what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna do that. Oh, what did I? Stupid me. We're putting that there. These shelves oh. look at- Yeah, okay, I get it. So we'll first do the musical cylinder. Put that there. I don't even think we have to do this in particular order. These shelves look- I just think, uh, doing it in order I want to. No, you bitch. <laughs> okay, so those two are in, in that spot. And now we're gonna put this here. So now all of those are done. I came here thinking that maybe, um... Because I couldn't remember if I needed any valuable, like, paperwork or anything from that. Come to think of it, I don't think so. I think I just needed that punch card for Oscar's feet. It just occurred to me we had these press cuts. Oh, this is relating to Hans's fake death. Uh, mountain fall kills local figure. Yeah, so that's that. Okay, so we're gonna do this now. We're taking Oscar's punch card. Here we go, and we're doing that. If that's going to work, it looks like something's missing. Yeah, something. Hold on, let me see what we got. We got press cut. We got the confession. We got that. We got that. I'm trying to think what else was missing. All right, so up here it says meet, make feet for Oscar. Yeah, which is what I was looking to do, but it says start the factory. So I think. Actually, I need to start the factory first. And it has something to do with this other section down here. And I forgot. And it's ridiculous because I played this game not that long ago. I finished it just a few days ago. So what am I forgetting? I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot, guys. I'm just a moron. Okay, let's see where that goes. Because clearly I can't remember nothing. This just about completes that. Yes, yeah, so I'm just about done starting the factory. Is it down here? No, I think now what that what that was brought inside that that thing, whatever it was. So now it's going to be over here that when that little uh, vehicle was moving and it was supposed to have something. Yeah, it's here now, so we do this now. Now we do it. Now it's gonna move. That object once more.
Okay, so... That did that. Let's go back to it. Actually, if you look up now, it's only make feet for Oscar, so the factory has started. Back at the train station again. No need to go down there. And I don't think you talk to this dude. No. He's just here. Oh yeah, this That's is going to work. It looks like something's missing. Yeah, well, it's, um, winding up the train. Might as well just get that out of the way. Okay, so we at least did that. Tell me. Don't even tell me. I'm like the biggest idiot today. I think these are the correct ones. I don't think these are the wrong ones. I knew there was something about pushing those levers. I, didn't, I don't know. My brain's all over the place. I'm, I'm dumb today. Just today. I'm only dumb today. There we go. Let's get our boots. Wooden light. I hate this music. Okay, Oscar. Time to give you your boots. Here are your feet, Oscar. I hope they fit. Kate Walker, I see you managed to produce two XZ2005 underscore B models. Allow me to express a real feeling of joy, Kate Walker. They really suit you. Comfy? Very. Sorry. You are very kind, Kate Walker. 
I am sorry to have to leave you. Where are you going? I must find my train. Its departure is imminent. So yeah, we're, we're going on that train. See, join Oscar at the station. Okay. We're going, come on. Hey there, Oscar. My functions do not permit me familiarity, Kate Walker. Even if you are my first and only passenger. Me? Your passenger? Yes, you, Kate Walker. Is it not for that reason you completed my production process? If you say so. This train is amazing. I'm going to travel like a princess. I am happy that you like it, Kate Walker. This train has been designed to optimize passenger comfort. Okay, that has nothing to do with anything, so... I... I have decided to come along for the ride, Oscar. Ready when you are. Your ticket, please? <laughs> My ticket? What are you talking about? So the great. rules clearly state, Kate Walker, every passenger of this train must possess a ticket. Okay. And where do I get hold of a ticket? Only the ticket vendor may issue tickets. You are in luck. The ticket office must be open now. You should go there immediately. This is great. Oscar's the best. <laughs> but it's you? What can I do for you, madam? But Oscar, it's me, Kate Walker. Correct. Your name is indeed... Kate Walker. What can I do for you, Kate Walker? A train ticket, please. Why? Do you sell anything else? The only function of this ticket office is to issue tickets. You are requested to accelerate operations. The office closes in exactly three minutes. What can I do for you? A ticket, please. One ticket? Yes. One ticket. What is your final destination? I don't know. It's you who told me I had to get a ticket. A ticket to travel, then. Mm. There you are. Do not lose it. This office is not entitled to produce duplicates. This advice also applies to the accompanying documentation. There's a train ticket for the mechanical railway departing from Valadilan. Valadilan. This ticket is valid for one person and shall be and should be presented to any official of the mechanical railway when so required. Perfect. What's that? The authorization for the release of the train. The ticket officer may ask you for it at any time. Yep. So if you see at the top, that's for the, the notary guy. Um, authorization for access to all or a part of the movable and immovable estate constituting part of an inheritance. Uh, the Varlberg heritage. Description of the object. One mechanical propulsion locomotive, including coaches, accessories, and driver. The, pres the present document, stamped by the recognized permitting authority, entitles the holder of this document access to the aforementioned property. But, I mean, you are the... Attention! The exact moment has arrived to close this office. So basically, we need to go back to the notary to, guy to have this stamped, but... Oh, here, let's get this out of the way. Kate, it's me again. Dan, I was gonna call you. Yeah, yeah. Are you mad at me? I've just called Marson and Lorma. They told me you weren't expected to return this week. Oh, yeah. So when are you coming home? I don't know. There's nothing I can do about it. The situation is kind of tricky, you know. At the beginning of next week, I hope. Yeah, whenever. Dan, please. Just hang in there, okay? The stakes are higher than I thought. And you know how much I love this job. I suppose it's neither here nor anywhere to you that the Goldbergs are going to... It is. I mean, 
It isn't. I mean, Dan, this really isn't the moment. You know I'm thinking about you. I love you, sweetheart, and I'll give you a call when I have some news. Promise. I've got to go now. I've got kind of a, a train to catch. A train? Where are you off to now? This is crazy, Kate. To tell you the truth, I've no idea. Love you, honey. You know that. Kate! So I already know you need to go back to notarize that document, but for the sake of comedy, just watching her frustration, give it to him. There you are, Oscar. Does this mean we can leave now? I cannot accept this ticket for the moment, Kate Walker. Keep it. Why don't you want to take my ticket? I must abide by regulations, Kate Walker. Not all departure conditions have been fulfilled. I must confirm your departure release. You can be a real stickler for the rules, Oscar, my old fellow. So there we go. Here. This is the authorization for the release of the train. It has not been signed, Kate Walker. <laughs> Oscar, you're going too far. You just gave me this. <laughs> Does the train belong to you, Kate Walker? No. So there. This train cannot leave Aladdin without the agreement of its owner. I don't think Madame Varlberg is in a position to sign anything right now. In that case, the stamp of her legal representative is perfectly sufficient. Please hurry up, Kate Walker. This train will soon depart, and I must ensure it is not delayed. It's not that funny, but it's kind of funny just to hear in the, you know, her voice, the frustration. But what happens? Oh no, I forgot the notary will be resting. Oh no, what do we do? Well, luckily, we'll do it ourselves. Oh, hold on. And luckily we have ink. There we go. Train release permit okay. Now we are good to go. And we're actually going to be getting on this train and going. Exciting. Where are we going? Oh, come on. Here. This is your stupid train release <laughs> ratification, Oscar. Thank you, Kate Walker. That is perfect. It's me again, Oscar. Here we go. Hello, Kate Walker. Oh, yeah, wait. I Don't think for one moment that I'm bored of you, I- I also have much to attend- Yeah. I think now I give him the ticket. Right. Everything is in order, then. The train is finally ready to leave. I am most terribly embarrassed. Such ignorance on my part is inadmissible. I hope you still have confidence in my abilities, Kate Walker. Please, return to your seat and we can leave. Finally.
are we, Oscar? At the halls of residence of Bahochstadt University. And do we really have to stop here? The situation is incompatible with the pursuit of our journey. What are you waiting for, then? Wind them up. Find a way. There must be some sort of train winding thing just laying around in this weirdo station. I have seen nothing that fits that description, Kate Walker. I guess we'd better find out, then. I do not like this station. The atmospheric humidity is detrimental to my sophisticated wheel workings. I will wait for you inside the train. <sighs> Wimp. Okay, so, um, we're not in Siberia. That is where we're heading, but the train had to stop. And I just realized whenever I bring this menu up, my face is in the way. So, so, just so you know, the only thing above mission is her name Kate. Never important for me to go to use that. It's just extra fluff dialogue. But anyway, so I'm gonna leave this here. This is like a whole new chapter in this place that we've stopped at. So, I hope you like this game. I, I actually like it. You know, I already played it and completed it and moved on to the sequel. So, obviously I like it. Um, it's enjoyable. I like the puzzles behind it. And I, I do like Oscar. Alright, so I'm gonna continue it. There's, um... We already did the first part, Valla Vala de Len, and now we've moved on to a college, and then I think there's, um, there's either two or three more destinations after this. There's, like, a total of five. There's, yeah, a total of five. Okay, so, yeah, so each town is gonna get its own episode. So this is all episode one, and then we're gonna be starting in the college town and the second episode. So I will see you then. So I hope you have a great day. See you next time.